So they invited Maksudlu. Now, unlike the other participants, Maksudlu has his own bathroom at the tournament, which nobody else can use. It's called the Maksudlu Lu. Maksudlu was former world junior champion. 3,000 viewers, what else? Okay, so Abdus Satorov's white, another E4, E5. They played a Spanish and or Rui Lopez. Nothing to see here. D3, solid. Black's playing very passively, I would say. So time it's not time to fall asleep yet. Okay, now, one of the good things and bad things about younger players is some of them um, are super aggressive. And when I say it's bad and good, it depends. And often when... Uh, young player plays an aggressive move, two things could happen as far as that young player is concerned. One is it's good. So it's good and aggressive. So that's good. The other is it's not good, but my opponent doesn't know why it's not good. So it works out. And if you play passive boring move, <clears throat> such as Bishop B7 or Bishop D7, then you're not going to beat anybody. So if you want to win some games and you want to get your rating over 2,700, which both of these players have done before the age of 21, sometimes you have to play aggressively. And instead of waiting for white to play D4, as you know, waiting is the hardest part, black played D5. Um, not recommended by the engine. The engine does not like this move. And White played a very nice, I don't want to say refutation, but White played the most incisive way because White is also a junior player. And I, I'd heard of Abdus Satorov, you know, six, seven, eight years ago when he was playing in the World Youth when I was in uh, South Africa and Slovenia and Greece um, and Georgia, the country, and he was playing in the under 10 and under 12 and under 14. And, you know, he was fighting for first and or getting first. Um, and I was coaching the American players, so the truth hurts. Okay, and here Abdu Satorov played a fantastic move, D4. And white is simply more ready for this than black, because white can play bishop g5 pinning the knight. And these pieces aren't participating in this center battle. And if we take a lot on e4, for example, bishop takes e4, gains a valuable tempo, and probably just wins a pawn. So I don't know if Maksudlu underestimated d4 or didn't look at d4 very much because he figured... All four pawns are here, and it's my move, so something should be good. And the thing is, I can play e5 when it's legal, and you can't play e4 when it's legal. So like if I take this, and you play e4, it's hanging. I have lots of guys on e4. If you take this, and I play e5, then you got to move your knight away. So I have better control on the e-file because my knights and bishops and rook attack all these squares and your bishops aren't, aren't doing anything. So d4 is a very strong move and now white has a nice advantage. Okay, he played d, knight e4. He took on, on d4 and now white played an excellent move 
Uh, CD gives white a little advantage, but he played bishop g5, which is better. So now, if it was white's turn to move, white would win by taking on f6 either way. Knight f6, bishop f6, rook e8, queen e8, take on f6, or the other way around, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes, check, queen takes, rook takes, rook. So black has to do something about that. And the engine suggests two moves, <clears throat> and he played a third move. And one of the moves I can't imagine anybody playing is king h8. <laughs> so that this isn't check anymore. That's crazy. Uh, bishop d7, which defends the rook on e8, so we can take with the bishop and our queen is still defending. That seems more logical. Maksudlu played bishop e6. And the engine says that white's just winning now by playing simply. And instead of playing simply, Norderback gave up almost all his advantage of this move. He was too clever by half, probably because his opponent was in the loo. If you're British, this is a nice stream for you. Okay. So in this position, white should play CD, materials equal, and white has all these outposts for his knights, and the engine says basically white's winning, because this eternal pin, okay, recommended by the Bengals, maybe that was a flame, okay, but he played bishop b3 immediately, which is a bad move, and his idea at, of bishop b3 is if you take my bishop on b3, I'll take with the queen. And now, once again, I'm threatening, you know, knight takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and I win a piece the same way. And you have to sacrifice the exchange here because the engine says so. And white's up in exchange. That was his idea. Okay, instead... Black played h6, which is the best move. Leaving his bishop here, so there's no rook takes e8 stuff. Bishop takes e6. Rook takes e6. Knight takes f6. It's massive trades. And this is quite funny. In this position, Svidler and Howell were discussing which move was better, bishop f6 or bishop h6. And they concluded bishop f6, which is correct. The engine says bishop f6 is the best move. And they said, however, Abdu Satorov found, found a third move, which the engine does also. The engine says knight takes d4 is slightly better for white. But he played queen e2, not a move that they had analyzed. And this gives away all of white's advantage because black has a trick. And I don't know if... Abdu Satorov didn't see the trick or he saw the trick and overestimated his position. I don't, I don't know. And the trick is you play hg, queen takes check, the point of queen e2, king moves, takes, takes. Now if black takes this, he's winning. So white takes. And this position looks fantastic for white. Black's pawns are terrible. Black's king is terrible. White's rook is going to e1, and he's, I mean, this looks great. However, black has the move b4. And either Abdu Satarov didn't see this move when he played queen e2, he saw it and didn't care, um, or he saw it and underestimated it. And after after b4, black, black is okay. And black can also play rook to b8, which the engine says is even better, to play rook b6 and b4. Also with good drawing chances. Okay, rook e1. You have to get the rook into the game. bc, rook e6. And white is still pressing for a win, but you could see a possibility of even black winning with the pass pawn on the sixth rank. And black's up a pawn. Black's pawn structure is a little iffy. Now, in this position, black only has one move, and we can punish Karen because she's coming down. 
We can ask her what it is. How'd you guys do at the music thing go? Um, Archer won. Oh, you made coffee? Yeah. I just made coffee. Mm. Yeah, yeah, this is my leftover cold coffee. Archer won and Karen won. You're Aiden Karen. Won and said the I didn't win and Stephen did not win. Mm -hmm. I've looked at two games so far. This is the third game. Okay. It's Abdu Sitara versus Magsudlu. And the rule... In Tata Steel, this is actually a rule. I'm not kidding. By the way, everybody's going to think I'm kidding, but I can prove that I'm right. Okay. Yeah, I'll prove I'm right. Whoever has the longest name wins. And normally, Maksudlu was doing pretty well. Yeah. But he ran into Abdu Satorov. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Who has a longer name, Pragnananta or Ding? <laughs> right? And you would think Ding's better than Pragnananta. Yeah, Ding's number two in the yeah. world, and Pragnanha is number five in it, India. But Pragnanha won because he has the longer name. And as long as nobody asked me why Geary B. Carlson, we're all good. Ah, several people asked. Mm -hmm. Karen, I like your color coordination today. Oh, thank you. Always retweet. Yeah, even the mug matches your. You know. Not really. I have new pants. See? Mm -hmm. I just started learning chess. Any suggestions on what to learn? Chess. Yeah, you have to take my beginner's course at Chessable when it comes out in June. Let's get over like two inches. There we go. <laughs> That's plenty. You probably went too far. Yeah. Did you tell them about the Chessable course? I told them I'm doing a Chessable course. Yeah. So, yeah. Exciting. Mm hmm Okay. So, Karen, in this position, yeah. White just played rook e6, obviously attacking the bishop. Mm hmm Now, if you move the bishop, then g6 is hanging. Right. And your king's a little exposed. If you defend the bishop with king g7, I take the bishop... Mm -hmm. You take with your queen, and I can take the rook. Mm. Now, it turns out Black has one move here, which he played. Any other move, he has to resign. The move he played was king g7 anyway. And the mm -hmm. idea is, if you do win a piece, then pandemonium. No! Can you believe you can't stop it? That, that pawn's a queen in. Yeah. Okay. So king g7. Now here white should play queen e4, which was suggested by Svidler and Howell. But he played knight e5. He played it really quickly, too. Okay. And that, that throws away all his winning chances. Now the game should be a draw. Queen check. King h2. Bishop takes check. Rook takes. Queen d6. So the only way to play for a win for white is to take on c3. It looks like black's winning with rook e8 because the rook's pinned. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can play f4 and now you're threatening discover double, triple, quadruple check. Okay. And now he played the best move, king f8. Always play king f8. Rook takes g5. Queen takes check. Rook g3. Now, this is a very funny position because white's rook is pinned. But what white wants to do, it's not white's turn, but if it was, he would play king g1. Shockingly, black has no checks at all after king g1. And then we're threatening this pawn and more importantly, rook f3 winning your queen. And obviously, white has a better pawn structure. Okay. He played the best move. He's 2700. Rook e6, defending all his weak pawns. Okay, engine agrees. King g1, threatening rook f3. And in this position, the engine suggests a move that's very hard to play and find. Um, and what he did was also reasonable. But the best move is rook c6. And you, you have to take the rook 
Because if you move your queen somewhere, then, you know, rook c1 check. And then this position's a draw. It's perpetual check everywhere. Okay, but he played king g8, which is fine. The engine slightly prefers king e8, but okay. But he stopped rook f3, winning his queen. Rook d3. And c5 is a mistake. So he should definitely play queen e5. Although the engine plays queen e4 and says that's an easy draw. The queen e5 should draw. He played c5. Rook check. You can't play king h7 because something goes to h8 mate. Doesn't matter which one. So you have to play king f7. Rook check. You can't go to g8 because queen g7 is mate. Um, you can't play rook here because I take, take, take. And then probably I'm going to win this pawn too. It's probably winning. So he played king e8, rook d5. In this position, um, he should play the move queen e3 check. Takes, 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 rook a3. And this is a fairly easy draw, although Svidler and Howell weren't sure. The engine doesn't even say that white's better. And the way they were trying to win was sort of crazy. Howell and Swiddler. They were like here and then move the king here. And I was thinking, here's what I was thinking. Okay. I was thinking, and they were like, black gets counterplay by doing this and so forth. I was thinking if I cheated and played king here now, <clears throat> Yeah. And I play rook here, then what do you do? I don't know. So I know what they're talking about. I'm like, okay, king b2, you could just play it. I won't even move. Rook g3. What's the winning plan? I don't see one. What, what are you going to do? You can't move your king up. You can't move your rook up. You can do nothing. They thought that white had winning chances here but that black could draw with accurate play. And I was like, king b2, rook g3, then what? And the engine says that nobody's better here. It says white's not better because black has an active rook and white's rook sucks. Okay, so this would have been a, a fairly simple draw, queen e3 check. And as I told the chat, younger players, they don't like the simple. They like calculate and, and they're good at that. So that's it's good and bad. Let me figure out who I'm supposed to thank you. I got the yawn, sorry. <laughs> uh, cards 512 Karen would win no so this is this must be what he was thinking this is probably a draw but I'm worse I'm down a pawn I don't have to be a down a pawn and I'll just draw without being down a pawn okay but kings you know no good so he played queen h4 which is the second best move that's not bad he wants to, you know, check down here. Rook d1 is the best. c4 is not very good. He should have played king f7. This king's not very good. Now in this position, uh, I mean, this just seems too difficult to defend. The engine says white's up like plus one. So white has winning chances. <clears throat> I think it's much easier to play white. I think black is like, how do I not get mated, you know, by everything? Yeah. How do I, you know, it's terrible. And this king is just safe, safe, safe. Mm -hmm. Now in this position, uh, yeah, this is where white can play king h1. Can play it in more than one position. Okay, play king h1 here. That's fine. Queen f8. Queen f8 is a mistake according to the engine. He should have played queen b2. Now black should get counterplay with rook e2. Threatening queen takes g2 mate. It's obviously very scary to play because it looks like white might just have mate. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't because the engine says so. So he played rook e7 which is safer. And unfortunately his, 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 pawns, his pawns are just too weak. Rook h7, threatening this. 
it's cute, but it's not good. Rook f4, exclam. That's an incredible move. So the idea is if you take this, which is a blunder, now your rook's hanging, you agree, and rook d4 is winning. Mm -hmm. So you have to play rook d3. Now queen g7 wins. Because if the king goes to the back rank, I go here. So the king has to go up somewhere. I take this. If you go back, I just play rook check and queen check. And if you go up, I pin your queen. Yeah. Okay. So rook f4 is an amazing move. King c7 is the only move. Very nice. Then he made a mistake. He should play king h2, tucking his king away. But he played rook d4. And now in this position, Maksudu found the only move that draws. Very hard to find. Want to try? Yeah. Okay. Black has one move that draws. Right. Otherwise, he has to resign. And he played the move that draws. Also, he didn't draw. But, you know. <laughs> you guys have to understand, this is like the fifth hour in the game. Players are exhausted. And Black is especially exhausted making sure he doesn't lose his queen or getting mated. And they're calculating all these variations. And they make mistakes. Rick D4 was a mistake. And Maksudu capitalized it for the moment. Yeah, I don't know. Right. I mean, I would I would lose every time. <laughs> if I was playing. Abdus Satorov and I was black here, I would always lose. I would I would play and lose, then I could play it again and lose, and I would learn. And and I would just keep losing. I would never draw. Never. Because I would I keep making a mistake somewhere because it's too hard. Rook F7, exclam. The only drawing move. Now, white has one move that's Slightly better for white, and otherwise white's lost. This rook ending is losing, because my rook's going here. Move it on up. This is winning for black. Oh, okay. I was okay. wondering. So he has one move that doesn't lose. Queen h8. And he has to keep control of e5. For example... If I play the second best move, then rook check, queen e5 check. If pawn here, then here, mate. And if queen here, then you you will answer. Black to play and win. Um, rook h1. Rook h1. Put it in h. So he plays queen h8. Now the game should be a draw. Queen b5 is a mistake. He should play queen e6. Or queen c6. Keep his queen near his king. Queen b5. A4 exclam. And the a4 move tries to divert the queen away from queen e5 check, which is crushing black. It's probably winning his rook because his king and rook are far apart on mm -hmm. that check. And you stop that with your queen on b5, but not if you take on a4. So you play queen c5. White has one move that keeps the advantage. Rook d1, stopping the rook f1 check counterplay. Rook d7, white has one move to keep an advantage. Rook b1, getting them from all sides. Mm -hmm. Rook d8, check. Queen b2, it's a battery. King c6 is a mistake. Queen b8, and now white's just winning. The black king is no good. And that's a bad move. Losing immediately. Just takes all the pawns. Can't play queen e5. Well, why can't you play queen e5? 
Oh, queen e5 is the best move. Then white's plus 17 with queen h4 check. He did play queen e5. Okay. Yeah. Now. If this was a blitz game or a bullet game, black's next move is a blunder. If it's a slow game, it's not a blunder because he's going to lose anyway. So it's not a blunder. But if you don't play this move. Black played the worst legal move. Okay. He couldn't play worse. If you try to play the worst move, it's not as bad as his move. Um, That's what happens when you're playing for six hours. King F5. Thank you, uh, Al Ramek. All right, what did White play? Recommended by everybody. Um, rook B5. Mm -mm. Oh, that's the Karen trick. Yeah. Yeah, then Rook D1 check. <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Wait, you will agree this is the best move. Karen agreed. Um, Karen see. approved. Well, go ahead. I see a lot of different moves. Mate. Uh oh. <laughs> right. Now, now, it doesn't matter because if he plays here, okay, if he plays there, mm -hmm. then Queen E1, the king has to defend the queen somehow. If you play king here, I check you away from your queen. King mm -hmm. here, rook here, and king here, I take. So you have to play king f4. And then everything wins immediately. This is an, this announces mate. Yeah, you can resign here because your rook's hanging. But the engine actually shows a mate. Actually, it shows a mate in this position. Even though black has checks and stuff, it still announces mate because, you know, Depth 35, so. So it's not really a blunder. It just ends the game more quickly. Yeah. Right. So the number one player in the world lost, the number two player in the world lost today, and the world junior cha former world junior champion lost. And we have a tie for first with Giri and Abdus Satorov. Abdus Satorov has a longer name, so he's doing better.